So are we excited yet? Are we excited that we've gone from this to this relatively quickly? It's still all HTML. Now we're exploring a framework. We're using jQuery Mobile, which is a way for us, sort of like a template, to get started quicker. It's still using tags that we've seen before, and sometimes, actually many times in tutorials, when you see learning jQuery Mobile, they're not going to use section, header, article. Usually they're going to use div. They're going to use div, but still, data role page. They're going to use div, data role header, div, data role content. You're going to see that a lot. This is a technically more correct way that you don't see as often. This is the way that I'm going to teach you, so hopefully I'm planting the seeds out there of a more correct way. Um, a more semantically correct way. Divs will work, but divs are generic containers that have no inherent meaning. Here, a section has an inherent meaning. A header has an inherent meaning. Then we are upgrading them, in a sense, with data roles. Data roles make sense because of jQuery Mobile, because of these three lines up here. The CSS line, the base jQuery code, and then the, the specific jQuery Mobile code. Tying that all together, we start to get quickly a project that will look like a mobile website and eventually of course a mobile app. We will of course be able to customize this because we're going to get tired of looking at a gray background with a slightly different gray footer with black text. We're going to be able to make it look exactly like our company colors later on. One of the things about a footer that you might think is why isn't it at the foot of the page? Why isn't it down here? Well, we need to add a little bit more to our code to tell it. Put it down there. So let's go to line 21 where we've said the, the role of this footer tag is to be a footer, but it needs one more thing. It needs one more attribute. This is data-position. We're going to see several times in jQuery mobile, our mobile apps, that we're going to add attributes to our tags to enhance them, and oftentimes they will start with data dash something. And the something is defined by the jQuery mobile specification, which of course we can look up, and we will look up, and we will refer to it. For the moment, we'll do it little by little. So now what I want to say, data position equals fixed. Now save and run it. And your footer should behave more like a footer. It's going to be fixed its position is going to be fixed upon the bottom of the screen, no matter the height of your screen. Have you tried increasing and decreasing the size of your web browser? Is it all maximized? Try stretching and pulling your monitor, uh, your web browser that is, and you'll see that it's going to grow and shrink. It's going to be responsive because your, your website and your app might end up on a tall, thin mobile device like this, or it might end up on a tablet, or it might go landscape, and this app is going to inherently be what is known as responsive, in that it will respond to the size of the monitor, you know, handheld, laptop, tablet, whatever. It'll respond, and it'll grow and shrink to its size. That would we can obviously do with plain old HTML and CSS, that it would be very time-consuming. jQuery Mobile to the rescue. We simply add data roles or data positions or other such uh, parts of the specification. And look at that. My footer is at the bottom. And it will always be at the bottom. And if you try this, I'm going to make my, my monitor, my web browser kind of wide, like a tablet. And even if I'm able to scroll, the footer will always stay fixed to the bottom, like a real app. Wait a minute, doesn't, doesn't a real app also have the header fixed? Yes. My header is moving too. I'm going to use the exact same attribute, data position fixed, to my header to keep my header fixed in place. If you don't know what I'm talking about, notice I've scrolled and the name of my app is cut off. I want the name of my app to always be visible, just like Twitter. So let's add over on line 12. We've got data role header, still inside the angle brackets, data dash position, 
equals quotes fixed. So same code as before. And now, if I rearrange my web browser like this, and I scroll, the content will scroll in between the header and the footer. jQuery Mobile also has some built-in behavior, because sometimes these headers and footers get in our way of our contact. Content, try this. I'm at the very top of my document. If I tap or click anywhere in the content, the footer hides temporarily, and I tap again, and it comes back. That's built into Java, to jQuery Mobile. Same thing as if I scroll to the bottom, and my header's in my way, I can tap the content, it goes away. Technically, if I'm in the middle and tap, they both go away. I'm just showing you that if I'm at the bottom, one goes away, as opposed to at the top. But if you tap in the content, it goes away. That's built in. I can deactivate that behavior, of course, but at the moment, this is built in. And this is the whole point of using jQuery Mobile. We've got a lot of great things built in for us to get started quickly. Frameworks. Frameworks currently rule the land of web design. Uh, because who wants to write that code again and again and again, and copy and paste it again and again? You use a framework, you learn some of these framework-specific commands and attributes, and suddenly you've got a project much more advanced than you would have done by hand. It's not cheating or anything like that. People are using frameworks very, very often. Have you heard of the Angular framework? Node.js, jQuery Mobile, Ionic, uh, on and on and on. There's lots of these frameworks out there. There's a brand new one every day, it seems, that solves some sort of problem um, or does something that is very useful to someone, and then it, it becomes popular and uh, takes over. jQuery Mobile is one of the most popular mobile frameworks. That's why we're using it in this class. It's not the only one. There's one from Intel. I forget what it's called, but there's an official one from Intel. Big old chip maker Intel released a jQuery um, framework to make a mobile app quickly with their own set of icons and default graphics and all of that. So here's our project so far. What I want to do here is one more thing before I forget. Um, this looks pretty mobile friendly so far. To guarantee that it'll look well on all devices, not just mobile devices, uh, I want to add another another head tag. So you should be seeing that the head block is stuff outside of the main body. It's not visible to the regular user, but it affects the behavior of the of the project. I want to add another tag up here. This one will make the project even more mobile friendly, even though it's already pretty mobile friendly. And again, the order of these things matter. So notice the order I wrote these. And I'm going to add one more after meta character set. So before the link, brand new line 5 again. This tag is going to be another meta tag. So it's a single self-closing tag. This is going to be another long one, but this one is going to define the viewport. The viewport in my web browser is everything that is not the, the actual web page itself. That means what's, what's not in the viewport is the address, this back button, the tabs, this edge of the web browser, down at the very bottom there's an edge. The viewport is basically everything in this main area of the web browser. So I'm going to define the viewport, the boundaries of it and such, so that my app looks nice. Because if you visited a website that is not mobile friendly, a dead giveaway is that you visit the website and all the text is tiny. You have to zoom in to view the text, or double tap to zoom in. A real app is perfectly formatted to whatever device. The text is always as big as it needs to be. The pictures are as big as it needs to be. So we're going to add a meta tag to, to guarantee that. 
that our content is always properly zoomed in, that it properly fills the screen. So it's a meta tag with two properties. The first property is name equals quotes viewport. We are going to deal with the viewport, and I just said the viewport is the main web browser. Well, in our apps, eventually when we get there, our viewport is, you know, the the, the screen, the glass, the the touchable area of your of your device. This is my viewport. So if I load up, you know, if I load up Instagram, the viewport is everything in the center of the app, or the app itself. So not including up here where I have my notifications and not including down here where I've got my back button and so forth. The viewport is the actual visible area of my app. So I'm saying here, let's define that more mobile friendly. So the next property, still in uh, the next attribute, still inside of meta tag is content equals quotes. This is sort of going to be like CSS in that I can I'm going to specify several things at once. The first thing is I'm going to say initial dash scale equals one. So maybe I shouldn't say like CSS because the syntax is not like CSS at all. But I'm just trying to say I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to control various things. First of all, initial scale, fancy way of saying the zoom level. Right now, the zoom level will be one. In the world of computers, we count from zero to one. So one is one hundred percent. Zero is zero. If I wanted to say a zoom of fifty percent. I would write 0 0.5. A zoom of 75%, 0 0.75. So I'm going to say here, the, the, the initial zoom, when someone loads up my website initially, the first thing it will be, zoom me to 100%, comma, space. And the space here is just for readability. We can run it all together. Next we'll say user-scale Scalable, scalable, user scalable equals no. Don't let the user zoom in and out. On a website, you can zoom in and out. Do you ever zoom in and out on an app? Do you see the Facebook um, app, the text, and zoom into it? It's always perfectly sized to your device. You, you never really zoom in and out of an app. So to, uh, to not break the illusion, this is ultimately a website which will become an Android app or iPhone app. But we don't want people to break the illusion that it's not a real app. It will be a real app, but it's a web app. So to prevent them from zooming in and out, user scalable, no. Um, sorry, why is that though? Because then you, you know, when you make video Android, right? Mm -hmm. It's zooming in and out on the camera. Yeah, on a website, not on an app. If you load up a Facebook app or an Instagram app or Snapchat app, you're not, you're not zooming in and out of it. It's always the perfect size of your device. So the app stays only the names, right? The, the in and out. No, even know. that. We're not going to be able to zoom in and out of anything inside of our app, like a real app. You never zoom in and out of an app. But what are we zooming in though, in, on a mobile app? A website. Mm -hmm. We're zooming in on a website. So the website is not an app? I know. This is currently going to be a website that acts like an app, and then in month two, it will be a real app that you can download from an app store. In this month, it's just going to be a website, but we will not allow people to zoom in and out because we're going to design a website that, look, that will look like a real app. We won't have to zoom in and out like a real app. If it doesn't make sense yet, just trust me. Next up, we've got comma. We've got another value here. This one is, again, a real app takes up perfectly the space on your device. So we're going to say width, W-I-D-T-H, the width of our, of our project equals will, will be the device dash width. Stretch out to fill the width of the device. We don't say a height because the height you know, we're always adding to an app and scrolling and all of that. We don't have to define a height. But we're saying, first, zoom us in so that the text is not tiny. Then, don't let the user zoom in and out. The text is fine. 
then stretch out our project so that it's as wide as the, as the device. All of these three things like a real app. If you save and run that, you really shouldn't see any difference. But we're just laying a, a, a groundwork for it to be very, very app-like when we get to that point. See, so, yeah, I don't see a difference between the before and after. Again, this is more for laying a foundation for when it actually is an app. So at this point, we've got our project. We want to get started learning HTML5. We want to go to the first lesson, which is on page 2, section 2. Now we need to talk about let's make a button, let's make a link, so that we can go from page 1 to page 2, because we've got page 2 content that exists here. We, we, ha we have no way to get to it, no, no button to take us there. So let's make a button. Let's go to, let's say right after where I've got Instructor Victor, let's say here, well, uh, let's push the paragraph down to its own line actually and then we'll push the learn text into the paragraph like that you know uh, functionally it should still be the same I just want to break this up because as I've said if I've got some content that can fit in one line I keep the tags on one line and now actually I want to add multiple lines of content to this paragraph so I'll just break it up into separate lines at the end of that line 21, learn from the expert, let's add a break so that we get a new line. It's still within this paragraph and then we're gonna say uh, lesson one. This lesson one text will be a, a button in a moment. But this is our anchor text. This we will upgrade to look like a button. So we'll say lesson one here. And this will work with a plain old A tag. The A tag is a link. In the A tag we've seen before, but we're going to upgrade it with jQuery mobile, data role. The role of this is a button. So type that, save it, and run it. Let's see what happens. We've seen A tags before. We've seen that it's going to be text with an underline. We've seen that. And now with data role, but not with data role, go ahead and save it and run it. What does it look like? With data role, with data dash role equals button, we've got a button with a little drop shadow and an edge. You hover your mouse over it and it, and it behaves, it reacts, it, it changes color reacting to us. You click on it, it reacts to that. It doesn't do anything yet, because we're not done yet. But look at that, we've upgraded it. If it had, if it had been, if it did not have that, uh, that data roll, it would have looked like a plain old, like a plain old text link. But simply with data roll button, looks pretty cool. <clears throat> let's get a little more fancy. We let's add another data attribute here. Another way to further define this, to upgrade this. Data rolls work because we've got jQuery mobile. So this will work because we've got jQuery mobile. We'll say data dash icon equals. 
jQuery Mobile has about 40 or 50 icons built in. I don't have them all memorized, but one that we often use is what it might not quite make sense here, but let's use the, the icon called Home. There's a Home icon built in. The Home icon looks like a little home. So without us having any artistic ability, we can say, let's make an icon of the home. Let's make a button with a home icon. Data-icon home. There it is. So off the top of my head, we've got star. Looks like a star. Uh, user. Of course, I'll show you the list of all possible ones, but here's just some ones I remember. User. That'd be perfect for my app when I let a user log in or to look up their profile, let's say. Well, there's one called navigation, which gives us that sort of little compass kind of icon, so maybe if we want to get directions from our app. So there's a bunch of built-in ones for common tasks, let's say. Uh, there's one uh, that we can use. Some, some of these icons, clearly the name and what it looks like has a built-in meaning. I would not use the home icon on a button to send an email. I would use the icon for, and I always forget, is it mail or email? We would use the icon that would have a meaning associated, it's not email, that has a meaning associated with its task, its mail. So that would be the perfect button to send an email, contact the developer, whatever. So we'll get to this later on with about talking about user experience, which is UX, um, and information architecture and all of that. There's icons that have a meaning that have evolved throughout the years. So we don't want to confuse the user by using the wrong icon for a button. So we can we have an icon that we can use perhaps for our lessons. Question? As we now this code, how can I identify the jQuery code or on JavaScript and is that payable? So so if let's say you were reverse engineering someone's code and you wanted to figure out what it was, is that kind of what you get that jQuery Sometimes it's it's hard to 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 answer that because data dash is an HTML5 construct. Data dash whatever we want, that's that's um, HTML5. But the jQuery mobile specification has defined data dash icon, data dash role, data dash position. So it's sort of like we just have to memorize them. And there's not like a, a hundred of them. But if I ever see data role or data icon, that often tells me right off the bat that's jQuery Mobile. Data role is the, the HTML5. Data role is HTML5? Data is HTML5. Data role is, J is jQuery Mobile. Data icon is jQuery Mobile. Data position is jQuery Mobile. Data by itself is HTML5. Yes. Um, recently in the search engine, there's a, a different um, result, which is a mobile, a mobile friendly. Did you see that recently? Is that is that for an app or is that just for a? Well, that's for getting in. Design? That's getting into the ideas of SEO. Short answer is that the search engines uh, on your website will rank you better. If your if your website is mobile friendly, it's giving an extra link there, right? No, that might be on the, your website's software itself, like WordPress. Mm -hmm. If you design your website in WordPress, you might have a button down at the bottom that says "mobile friendly" or "mobile version." Well, just in Google, I saw it there. I'll show you after class. Okay. So I'm going to use bullets. Bullets kind of gives me an idea. These are lessons that I that I can go through. Any one that you would want could work, but again, if I use the home icon here, it doesn't quite make sense, perhaps. 
I'm going to use one called bullets. And later on, we'll look up what are all the possibilities, because there's a bunch of them. Um, and then, of course, we'll learn, well, we can make our own icon. I can design my own icon in Photoshop and use it. That'll work, too. That'll be later. So we've got a button. It has an icon. I want to click on it to actually go to page 2, to my lessons. So the next piece of the puzzle is we actually do need href. It doesn't quite matter the order we put it in, in this case, but I'm going to usually do it this way. I'm going to have the classic a href part and then the, the new jQuery mobile part. So href, we've seen that before. And we want to link to that other section. But here's our problem. Both of these sections there's no way to tell them apart. They're both in the code called section. If only there was a way to use something to mark elements in our document uniquely. IDs, exactly. We can name each of these uniquely with an ID. And if they've got a unique ID, then we can reference them in JavaScript and in plain old HTML when it's a link. So let's say, um, we'll write here in the, well, let's do it this way. In section two, uh, there's section two, inside of the section two tag, line 29 or so, let's add the attribute ID equals quotes. So we've seen IDs for CSS and classes for CSS, and they, this will still work uh, for CSS purposes. But jQuery Mobile, in a sense, piggybacks on top of this, so this could be a little confusing. But we're going to use IDs in a very special way. When there is a section, we will also use the ID to differentiate each page of our app. So I'm going to call this Lesson 1 lowercase, no spaces, like a regular ID. So now this has a unique name, Lesson 1. It's unique because it's an ID. Remember, an ID can only be used once per document, and this will count here. This is going to be one HTML document with 40 lines of code, and I can only use Lesson 1 once, even though we've got a section for Lesson 1 and a section for Welcome screen. We can only use Lesson 1 once. That's how, then, this will know that when we click this button to take us to Lesson 1, because there cannot be more than one section called Lesson 1. The other quirk here that we'll just have to memorize is that when we actually link to it here on href, let's back up to line 22, we have to write pound, the name of the ID. Actually, that shouldn't be a big surprise. When we wrote CSS, we had that. We had div ID equals div1, whatever we called it. And then in the code, in the CSS code, we wrote pound div1 and all the CSS rules. So this should not be totally new. But here we're saying now, we've got a button that once we click it, will take us to the section called I, a section called Lesson 1 because of its unique ID. Let's see if that worked. Save it and run it. Let's see, I've got a button. I'm going to click it. There's Lesson 1. Problems? It doesn't look like page one. Where's my footer? Where's my header? Problem number two, how do I get back to page one? Ignore the, ignore the back button there. Because let's say you've got an app and you're in the app navigating. You know, there's a way within the app itself to click on a button to go to the different sections. You shouldn't really rely on a back button. Even though an Android device has a back button, an iPhone doesn't. Other devices don't have a back button. So we're going to rely on navigating within the app itself. Ignore that back button. Obviously it works, but if we were in a real app, we wouldn't have that. We'd have to have some mechanism within the app to navigate, which we currently don't. So those are our two problems. Yeah, we got a link and we went to page two, 
but now it doesn't look like page one, section one, and it doesn't have a button to take us back. But so far, did that work for everyone? All right, that's, that's the codes so far. Let's see if everyone learned All right, so um, let's address these issues here. The first one, page two or lesson one doesn't look like page one. In the beginning, um, one annoying thing that we'll see is that it does not automatically, every section does not automatically look the same because it doesn't inherit to the data roles. We explicitly wrote data role page on line 12, but I have not yet, some of you may have, I have not added data role page to my second section. I have not added data role header to my header, data role content to my article, and so forth. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to our second section, which starts for me on line 29. And I'm going to write this. Usually I write the ID as the last attribute. So inside of section tag, we need data role equals page. Now it's going to look like a page with a unique ID. Then I'll go into header and add data role header. Data position fixed, so it stays at the top. Data role header. Data position. I know that from the previous page that my header could scroll away if I don't fix it into place. We should be getting the idea here. Then I'm going to go to article, and what data role is that one? Which one did we write previously? I think I heard someone say data role content. And then footer, data role, footer, and fixed, data position, fixed. Take a moment to write that, save it, and run it. That should at least fix one of our issues. 
now page two, lesson one, should look like less, like page one. It's going to have the header, a, a central content area, and a footer area. It's going to come together and look consistent within the project. <coughs> see if mine worked. So I'm going to run it. I've got I've got um, my page one. I click on lesson one. It goes to page two and it looks consistent like page one. I've got my header, my footer, my content area. I still have a way to go back. That comes next. Did this work for everyone? So it's just simply adding these data elements, these data properties that we're going to be getting used to. Data role, we, we use that very often, data role. We have some more specific ones like data position. Uh, we saw one data icon. We'll have some other ones like for animations. Data dash transition, that is. Uh, so. This is, uh, this is coming together. We have two things we can do here. Well, three things. One thing that we can do, we're on page two, and based on what I've already learned, on page two, what I could do is create a button, just like before, to click it to link me back to page one. Another way that we can do this is we can have a button that says back. We can have a back button built into our app to take us back. And the third way is to create a much more elaborate navigation system with multiple buttons and all of that. So we'll do the middle ground. We'll do this, this middle one, which actually is surprisingly easy. Let's do this. On your, on your data roll, on your lesson one page, your second section, let's go to the header and at the end of the tag, in the tag, we'll, we will add another attribute. We've got the data role attribute, the data position attribute, we want one more. We want data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. Save it and run it. Let's see what we get. Notice btn button is spelled btn. Don't spell it button, spell it btn. Data add back button. So go from page one to page two to see the result. I'm on page one, I go to page two, a back button with the word back and a, an icon and a built-in functionality that when I click it, it goes back. So all of that from the shorthand, not super short, but from the shorthand, data-add-back-button, true. So now I've got a simple back button at the top. It's at the top because I added it to the header. So jQuery Mobile has a variety of things built in. 
a general template, various icons, various functionality with buttons and behaviors and such. It also has various animations built in. So let's play with a few jQuery mobile animations. You might not have noticed this, but when you're on page one and you click on lesson one to go to page two, section two, it fades into view, and when you press back, it fades into view. That's a transition. That's an animation. Um, the default transition is a fade transition. We have other ones built in. Not a whole bunch of them, but let's try this. We're going to have a different kind of animation when we click on Lesson 1. A different animation. So we're going to back up to line 22. We're going to back up to our button. We've already said that when you... We've already taken this link and we've upgraded it to a button with data roll button. And we've given it an icon, data icon. Now let's give it a new animation. We didn't specify an animation, but now we will specify one. So we'll say, still inside of the tag, the attribute data-transition equals, got a few to choose from, here's one I remember, slide. Save it and run it. Now you'll see that when you go from page one to page two, suddenly you have a new animation. A slide animation. Let's see, data dash transition slide. Uh, I think so. I, I hardly use it, but we can try that. Did you did you try it? None? Yeah, Okay. So I'm gonna do slide. Look at that. It slid over. And look at this. When you press back, it does the opposite. It automatically knows to do the opposite direction. Question. Okay, uh, we're about to take a break in just a moment. Let me let me finish this thought and I'll be right there. Uh, let me show you a couple more transitions, then we'll take a break. Uh, this one's slide. Here's another one. Um, slide up. One word, no dash. Slide up. So when you click it, the next screen slides up. When you click the back button, it slides down. It does the transition oppositely, automatically. Do another one here. Pop. P O P. It won't look as good as it could for our whole page. This is better for when we create, let's say, pop up boxes. Remember that alert that it asks you for your name? Well, we can combine that with a pop transition so that it will actually look like it pops out at you when someone clicks it. So if I click it here, you don't get the full effect because it's such a big screen, but if it was a little pop-up, and then it pops down. So can you kind of see that? It pops towards you. Let's see what's another one. I think turn. Is that it? Turn? Or flip? What's it called? Yeah, it is turn. So it's like a page turning. And then lastly, and we'll take a break, try flow. It's 8.06. We'll be back at 8.17. Um, and when we come back, we'll learn some more. Try flow and then take a break.